Caravaggio is a major artist, but he's also a very rare artist. Since we discovered it in 1951, 65 pictures by the artist have been recorded. 65 paintings, so this would be the 66. And only two or three are in private hands in Italy, so they cannot be exported. So the arrival of this picture uh, on, the, on the open market is quite uh, an extraordinary thing. One of the great moments of the discovery was the day, uh, it was a Saturday, when Nicolas Spinoza came to see the picture and was shown the picture by Jean-Pierre Cousin. And his enthusiasm, you know, has started the whole process. From him, we, he spoke to Keith Christensen, who flew to see the picture, saw it in the daylight, got also very, very excited uh, by the painting. And then, you know, it went on, you know, we showed it to John Gash, to Rossella Vaudray, David Stone, and I'm forgetting many others. Uh, the reception to the picture was fantastic. And that gave us wings, you know. You knew that we were on the right track and we had actually found a great picture. We have texts, there are facts that uh, cannot be denied. We know that the picture was seen in September 1607 by two persons. The, per the first person was Ottavio Gentili, who was the agent of the Duke of Mantua. He sent his agent and his agent is reporting on the negotiation. And just beside the negotiation, there is one small sentence that is fascinating for us. Ottavio Gentili says, and I've also seen two bellissime cose di Caravaggio, which he painted while he was there in Naples. They are with Finson. Louis Finson was a painter, I would say a second, second rate painter, active in Naples and then in France and who died in Amsterdam. But this painter was not so well known as a painter, but he was a huge dealer. This man sold more than 15 Caravaggios and he owned these two paintings. This picture, the picture we have in front of us, and the picture, the Virgin of the Rosary, which is today in Vienna. Ten days later, we have a second letter. So he sends his expert, Franz Bourbus, who succeeded Rubens as the advisor to the Duke of Mantua. And Purbus tells us that he saw the two paintings. He described briefly the Virgin of the Rosary, a huge painting, an altarpiece picture, and he gives the price of 400 Ducati. And then he described the second picture, Oloferno and Judith, da camera, which means foreign interior, by opposition to the large altarpiece, and with three figures, half length. That fits exactly with our picture. 1617, Finson dies in Amsterdam. And in the Amsterdam archives, we have the will of Finson, who leaves the two pictures, or more exactly his half share, in the two pictures to his associate and neighbor and friend, Abraham Vink. Abraham Vink is another painter dealer, very minor painter, but big dealer in his time. Fourth document, 1619, death of Abraham Vink in Antwerp. And in the Antwerp archive, we have the deceased estate uh, inventory written um, after the death of Abraham Vings. And in the deceased estate, there is the uh, Vienna painting, the Virgin of the Rosary, but Oloferno and Judith has disappeared. He has sold it between Amsterdam and Antwerp between 1617 and 1619. Then we lose track of the painting. We have two clues though. 1689, a deceased estate of a very big dealer in Antwerp, Alexander Voigt, and he has a Judith and Olofernes by Michelangelo de Caravaggio, which is valued for a vast sum of money. So these are the last track until the picture reappears when Marc Labarbe finds it in 2014 in uh, Toulouse attic. We have one clue though. The back of the picture is a stretcher of the years 1800-1820, French. The picture was lined, relined in France between I would say 1790 and 1820. So we know that this picture was, was in France. We don't know if it was in Toulouse, but it was in France at that time. And until uh, 2014, the picture was known also by a copy, which is in the uh, Palazzo Zevalos in Naples. And this copy was exhibited in London in the National Gallery in 2005 as what is left, all we, do, we know, of the lost composition by Caravaggio. We believe that the picture that Marc Labarbe has found in Toulouse is the original. We believe it is the original 
because it fits exactly with the description of the text, the size, the dimensions, and the writing. And this is the quality of execution, the rapidity of execution, the energy that is thriving all through the picture, as well in Judith's face, you know, with the, the energy that she's transmitting to us, the beauty of the still life part of the painting, as well as in the hand and beautiful aspect of the picture, the treatment of the black sleeve of her dress, you know, it's a kind of satin dress, you know, of silk dress, the beauty of the sheet of the bed, the beauty of this red knot, you know, of the red drapery, the heaviness of the drapery, which was in the text supposed to be a very beautiful one, which you find in the Virgin of the Rosary, in the death of the Virgin in uh, the Louvre in Paris, or a small part as if it was cut from the same drapery in the wonderful painting, which is the Christ at the Column of, Rouen, of the Rouen Museum. This is the writing of Caravaggio. That's why the picture is by Caravaggio. So not only this picture is an original by Caravaggio, but it is a great original by Caravaggio. It is Caravaggio at a time when he's changing. He's moving from the magnificent Judith and Olofernes, which is in the Palazzo Barberini in Rome, which is four or five years earlier, 1601 or 1602. Slightly colder, with a freeze composition, uh, with a very beautiful uh, uh, Judy. This is a much more powerful picture, much more tragic, much more contrasted. The reds are more red, the blacks are more black. Uh, he is introduced, it's a painted in red, white and black. You know, it's a really tragic picture. That's when Caravaggio has left Rome. He has left the very cultured Rome. And then he moves to Naples. And the Naples of 1606, 1607, he's in Naples with a lot of money, but with no painters. Uh, there were commissioners, there were people who were keen to buy his paintings because his fame has reached Naples, but he had no competitors there. And that's where he develops a very personal style. He develops something completely new. And this is what makes of this picture a crucial painting. Not only the picture that Marc Labarbe has found, but we believe that it is a truly major picture by the artist. It's a new work by a huge artist, by an immense painter who is revolutionary, who is changing everything, even changing his own codes of painting. And you can feel that, you know, in details like the treatment of the old, the, the extremity of the old lady's uh, face, you know, which is so ugly with her goiter, with, uh, with her heavy wrink wrinkles. This can be seen as disturbing, not pretty, definitely she's not pretty, but I don't think Caravaggio was trying to do something pretty there. He was trying to impress, he was trying to render the text. we have postponed the cleaning to the last minute. That was done in January and February, and uh, the result is just fantastic. It's fantastic in two, two ways. First, it reveals a wonderful painting with all its power, its expression, its beauty, its sensuality in the technique. And second, it proved that uh, Claudio Falcucci and his technical analysis were right. Claudio had told us that the picture originally was different from what it is today. That originally Judith was looking at Olofernes, she was looking at what she was doing, exactly as she does in the other version, the first version which is in Rome. But it's a very major picture by Caravaggio. At a moment in his life, in his painting, where he's changing, when he's bringing something new, that's what is fascinating in that picture. Not another Caravaggio, but a fantastic painting. <laughs>